Knowing our God is awesome, our God is healer, we invite you to confess that faith you have and stay in that God with these questions and answers. So I ask you, do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, the scriptures teach and we believe that something unexplainable occurs between God and his people in the sharing of Holy Communion. In, with, and under the bread and wine, the Lord offers his body and blood to strengthen the faith of believing Christians. And those who receive the sacrament of faith receive what Christ promised, the forgiveness of sins. So I ask you, do you acknowledge your sins and are you willing to turn from them with the help and assistance of the Holy Spirit? Yes, I acknowledge my sin and seek the Lord's mercy. I invite you to join me doing that just now, acknowledging your sin as you silently reflect upon your past week, bringing those sins you know and those sins you don't know to God our Father. Holy Scripture tells us that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Knowing this truth, I ask you, do you believe that God, for Jesus' sake, has forgiven your sins? Yes, Jesus Christ died for me and suffered the punishment that I deserved. What motivated Jesus to willingly sacrifice Himself on behalf of lost and condemned sinners like us? His great love for the Father and for me and other sinners as it is revealed in Scripture. So friends, upon this, your confession before God and your brothers and sisters in Christ, and by your faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins, I announce to you as a called and ordained servant of God, and on behalf of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now move our attention to God's great gifts in his body and blood with these questions and answers. Friends, do you believe that the Lord offers Christians his body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine for the strengthening of faith and the forgiveness of sins? Yes, I believe the scriptures which teach the cup of blessing that we bless. Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Should Christians with weak faith receive the sacrament? The sacrament is especially offered to those with weak faith. What conditions should cause a Christian to refrain from receiving the sacrament? Disbelief, unwillingness to forgive another, hatred, and refusal to recognize the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. How then are Christians to live? Our life is offered to the Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And now for all baptized Christians who share in these our confessions and desire to come forward and receive the Lord's Supper this day, hear what Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 11. Whoever therefore eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. You may be seated. As you do prepare to come up for communion this day, we ask that you pray through this commitment that we have here to our Lord um, here at the supper table um, every time that we share in this gift. And after reading through this, if you desire to come forward and receive Holy Communion, uh, please come forward with your hand extended. You'll receive communion here and then the wine here. And we will do our continuous format flowing to my left. Uh, if you desire to come forward yet not receive communion, please simply go like this and you will receive a blessing um, from our Lord. And if you are communing with us in the pews today, uh, we will do that at the end of, of this uh, communion service. Once our praise team gets their communion, uh, we will have a song for you guys to sing this day. Friends, God's gifts are ready for you.
If you're communing with us in the pews, take and eat the true body of Jesus Christ given into death for all your sins. And then take and drink the true blood of Jesus Christ shed upon Calvary's hill for the forgiveness of all your sins. Friends, now as you have received this true body and this true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may his strength preserve you steadfast in the one true faith until life everlasting. To partner our Lord's love, his joy is never any peace, knowing all your sins have been forgiven. Amen. I invite you to stand as we go to our Lord in a time of prayer. Would you pray with me? O Almighty God, most gracious Father, by your word and spirit, you give us a fear and knowledge of you and your love and mercy. We humbly ask that you set us on the way of wisdom and insight, that we may love you for your laws of proof, that we may grow wiser still in the wisdom of your gospel and its righteousness, and take what we learn and go out. And do likewise, sharing your name and your peace and love that you have given to us, that you have bought for us through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you bless the mission of your church here in River Falls and in this land and throughout the world. We pray that by the proclamation of that gospel truth of Jesus Christ, many more may be built together. Many more may be gathered into your kingdom to celebrate with us day in and day out of those freedoms and gifts that we have been blessed with. Father, we live in a difficult time. Every time is difficult, but for us, Lord, it's really hit a spot where there's struggle and hate, and yet love and mercy shine. So, Father, we solemnly thank and praise you for the judgment of the court this past week in reversing decisions that have given open permission to destruction of human life. Father, moving forward, we know wickedness will still be around. We know still evil will happen. So we pray that you curb wickedness in every heart and place. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, spare those us punishments that we've deserved. Father, restore compassion and desire for life among all. And lead us, your church, to show the way. To show your love to the vulnerable, to the despised, to those whose hearts have turned cold. To show love and mercy from womb to tomb. For your son has taken upon himself our fragile skin, our fragile flesh, to free us from the bondage of sin by his death. And Lord, through this we thank you and by your Holy Spirit we pray that you draw every heart to yourself. That everyone believing in your son Jesus Christ would not perish but have everlasting life. Lord, be with families, parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles. Help them to set before those kids in their lives wisdom and truth. Help them set them on a path by raising them up in fear and knowledge of you and your love and mercy and your grace. And Father, we do ask that you bless the leaders of the states of this nation and all those leaders in this world. We pray that you keep their lips from speaking deceit, that you continually turn them from evil and cause them to do good, and to daily help them pursue and seek peace and justice. Oh Lord, we lift before you the many afflictions of our brothers and sisters. We especially lay at your feet Sam and Melissa, Susan and Diana, Jenny and Joyce, Kathy and Timothy. E.J. and Cody, Gino and Dave, Mary and Emily, Christina, Audrey and Boyd, Tammy, Arlene, Georgia and William, Paul and Pam, Al and Lee, Ryan, Lois, Darlene, Lisa and Beth. Father, for your sake, put your healing hand upon them. 
Restore them to full health as you see fit. Through it all, Lord, help them hear you amidst their cries, amidst their cries for deliverance. Deliver them from their troubles, but may their eyes and hearts be focused on you and your ever-healing hand. Father, since you have made us fellow citizens with you and all your children through the blood of Jesus Christ, help us not to look on anyone in our midst as a stranger or different, but embrace them instead as fellow members of your household. Bless the work that you are doing throughout your churches, that your gospel may continue to be proclaimed from land to land. Father, on this day we give you special thanks and praise for our brothers and sisters in Christ at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Prattville as they celebrate 100 years today of your name, of your gospel truth being proclaimed to those who need it. We pray that you bless them in their worship, and we pray that you bless them for a hundred years more, that they too may continue to go out saved by your gospel truth, redeemed and sent to share this truth and love with others. Father, you send your people to different places, to different lands, and to different neighborhoods. We pray for those who are moving on, moving on from this church to other churches. We ask that you bless them, especially the Zimmerman family. After so many years of faithfully serving you here, you now have called them elsewhere. We pray that you continue to work in their hearts and minds, that they too may be a blessing to where you are bringing them, as much as they were a blessing to so many people here. And through it all, Lord, may they continue to go, knowing that you go with them, you go before them, and that that gospel truth will continue to carry them through into this next stage of life. So, Father, we pray all these things before you and ask that you gather us together come that final day where we all can come together and celebrate the great gift that you have given to us, the gift of everlasting life with you in heaven. We bring all these things before you humbly, dear Father, and whatever else we don't know what to say, we thank you that you yourself have given us your Son, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Would you please be seated? invite you to enjoy our little glimpse of VBS 2022. No matter what. Yeah. yeah. Even if you do mean stuff. God is with you everywhere. Where is somewhere that you can think of where God is with you? Uh, at my beach. house. In your heart. In your heart. Yeah, good. God is in charge. That's... If you have a boy or, or a girl, uh, when you have a baby. Uh, that's... That God is stronger than I can. That's right. God. (laughs) All right. Can you guys think of a time when God was super strong? Um, when Joseph got out of jail. God is surprised. Yeah, surprising. All right, you guys. Can you tell me what is your favorite thing about VBS? Uh, Everything. My favorite thing. Dancing. Dancing. That's my favorite thing, too. And you like everything, huh, Maliko? Yeah? How about you, Lily? Everything. Everything? Playing outside. Uh, probably games. Maybe when we got a lot on us. The treats at the end. <laughs> or the snacks. Uh, you can just shout it out. Uh, music. Music? Yeah. Playing. Playing? Oh, yeah, and Listen playing. Games. Games? Perhaps everything. 
There you go. There's just a little quick glimpse into what the week brought. Um, continue now with our scripture readings. Yep. The first reading for today is taken from Acts 17, starting at the 24th verse. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. This is the word of the Lord. Be, Please stand for the gospel reading from Luke 23, starting at the 32nd verse. And behold, a lawyer stood up. Is this the right one? Okay. <laughs> a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Thanks. Go ahead and have a seat. Well, good morning. How are we doing? Are you cooling down after this amazing week of heat? Yeah? Wasn't it nice? Refreshing heat? Okay, a few people. Some of you are refreshed by the cool. Some of you are refreshed by that heat. Today you have this opportunity to be refreshed again in God's love, uh, his, his mercy and, and grace for, for you and me as we continue 
the Summer's Refresher teaching series. Now, now, two weeks ago, we started off being refreshed on the fact that we have this hope in life, thanks to Jesus. Last week, we were refreshed in the fact that we don't have it all together. We're broken. Uh, we're broken people, and yet we're loved by God. And, and because our God loves us so much, because our God is Jesus, we are, we are children of a God of the broken. Our, our God, Jesus, is, is a God for the broken. And, and so every week we've seen that the answer always lies in the same place. Jesus, right? The answer still always lies in Jesus. Not just in his name, of course, but in what he did. Jesus was broken on a cross to save us from our sins. Jesus was broken on a cross to save all humanity from their brokenness, from their hurts. He, he died and rose again, claiming victory over sin, death, and the devil. And guess what? He guaranteed eternal life to all those who believe. Eternal means forever. E e eternity is a lot longer than the time we spend here on this earth. Good refresher, right? Good reminder for ourselves. So today, as we continue this summer refresher teaching series, we, we find ourselves looking at the greatest commandment given by our Lord. And before we really dig into that, we got to go back um, a little bit to a, a more modern thought, a powerful thought from our friend Winnie the Pooh. Okay? Winnie the Pooh once said, a little consideration, a little thought for others makes all the difference. Now just take a moment and think on those words in light of everything going on. A little consideration, a little thought for others, makes all the difference. How would things in our nation, how would things in our world look if we applied this more frequently to others? A little consideration, a little thought for others. It makes all the difference. But the question is, do we truly understand this concept? Do the people around us truly understand this concept? I don't know. Some do. Some don't. And yet it seems like a little consideration, a little care for, for anyone different than you is a hard thing to do today. No one can have a different opinion anymore. And if you do, so often there is no care, there is no consideration, there is no thought extended. And yet this is what makes all the difference. Kindness, openness to conversation, taking the time to care, yeah, what would things look like right now if we just did this? They'd look a lot different. Now, all that being said, I'm not surprised at all by what is happening. And nor should you be. It's been going on for thousands of years. It's just the worst that most of us have ever seen. And yet here's the thing, if we follow Winnie the Pooh's advice and truly understand what God is saying, we can make a difference here in our own little neck of the woods where God has placed us. We might not be able to change things nationally or even drastically, but God can and God will use us by the power of the Holy Spirit in our own neighborhoods. This started a long time ago, so we've got to go way back, okay? We've got to go way back to the Old Testament 
And, and when you go way back into the Old Testament, you find yourself back in Leviticus chapter 19. And in Leviticus 19, God is sharing with the Israelites that he wants his holiness, his love, his mercy reflected in the lives and conduct of his people. You, you read a little bit of chapter 19 there in Leviticus, and you know what you see? You, you see God is saying, love your neighbor. <laughs> love your neighbor by not mistreating them. Love your neighbor by not mistreating them. Instead, treat them as they belong. Treat them as they are a person. In Leviticus 19, God says, he says, be fair. Don't be partial to the poor and defer to the great. He says, don't go around slandering one another. He says, do not hate one another. I have a question for you. Do you know what happens when a society hates one another? When a society hates one another, it tears itself apart. When a society hates one another, it tears itself apart. Because a society filled with hate tears itself away from God. And it self-destructs. So instead of hate, Leviticus tells us what? It says, reason. Read us, reason honestly with your neighbor. And if there is disagreements, which we know there will be disagreements, don't take revenge. Don't bear a grudge. But love, that's what God says he expects of his people. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's not just the Old Testament, though. We know that, right? That, that speaks to the followers of God on, on how we are to live. Jesus in our gospel reading that Tony just, just read for us there in Luke 10, 25 to 37. You've got this lawyer, this, this expert of the law. He asks Jesus, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? I invite you into that scripture today. Luke 10. Luke 10, beginning with verse 25. We're going to work our way through this a little bit. Luke 10, verse 25, it says this, Behold, a lawyer stood up to put Jesus to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And verse 26, Jesus said to him, What is written in the law, and how do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. So the response here is to love the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your stroll, soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. The guy knew it. The expert of the law, the, the lawyer knew it. Jesus said, you answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Now let's stop here for just a quick second and look at this a little bit, a little bit more in depth. Okay, that, that, that first part. Love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and you will live. Okay, that's a lot different than love your neighbor and you will live. And here's the difference. You're, you're loving God because of what he's done for you, from God, through Christ, right to you, right? By the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way that you can love God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. You love God in this way by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will live forever. And then he says, love your neighbor as yourself, and you will live. So that means loving your neighbor here. That, that means 
welcoming them and treating them with care and kindness and respect. Loving your neighbor means loving them the way that Jesus loves us, and you will live here. You will experience God's kingdom here on earth. You will live and you will see fruit. You will see this glorious fruit of God that is produced. Once again, we can simply put it and say, love your neighbor as yourself. Don't judge. Don't hate. Don't destroy. Love one another. But that expert of the law, right? Like so many quote-unquote experts today wanted to justify himself. So he asked, who is my neighbor? Huh? God? Jesus? Who is who's my neighbor? And that's such a great question, right? I mean, we ask it, don't we? There's been a time in our lives where we've asked the same thing because we want to justify ourselves too. So we ask, Jesus, who am I supposed to love? Who am I supposed to care about? Who should I share a little bit of concern or thought for? Jesus, no, really, who are these people that that you're talking about? You really can't be talking about them. So, So Jesus, really, who is my neighbor? And then Jesus gives this response that, 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 you know, so many of us or so many Christians like to quote or say they know. But yet, his answer is so not what many people want to hear. Or, or maybe better yet, we should say it's not how people want to live. And yet, Jesus' response should make us want to be part of the right ending of this story. So, so today, we're going we're gonna to look at these next few verses again, but I want you to think about this. Who are you more like right now? Are you more like the priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan? Pick it up back again in verse 30. Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. And then Jesus asked, which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? So who do you identify with? Who are you more like, the priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan today? The expert of the law does what we do. He tries to define his neighbor as someone that he can choose to care for. The Levite and the priest, they just walk right on by. They don't even say hi. (laughs) But guess what? I am about 100% certain that all of us have done something like this. Because there are times in our lives that we are like the priest, we are like the Levite. We do the same thing. We won't talk with those people because of where they stand on this issue or that issue. We say in our minds and in our hearts, I can't help them. They made their choices. Now they're living with it. I won't help them because they act differently. They're they're, they're different than me. They they think differently. Right? It's so much easier just to be like the priest and Levite, to just pass by on the other side of the road. So much easier not to engage them in conversation. 
It's so much easier to hate than it is to love. And yet we know, friends, we know we should be like the Samaritan. Right? We, we know we should be like the Samaritan. Look at what he did. This, this enemy of the Jews. This, this man put his life on the line to help someone out he shouldn't have been helping out. He spent his hard-earned money to make sure that he got the proper care and was doctored back to health. He invested so much in order to rescue a quote-unquote enemy of his. And then there's that question from Jesus to this expert of the law. Which do you think proved to be the neighbor? The response? The one who showed him mercy. And then Jesus responded back simply saying, you go and do likewise. What is Jesus teaching us here? Well, first off, he's trying to help us all comprehend that our neighbor is anyone and everyone. Our neighbor is, is, is those in need of the gospel. Our, our neighbors are the people we don't agree with. Our neighbors are those who don't like us. Our neighbors are those who don't believe what we believe. Our neighbors are those who, who don't like us because of how we live. Our, our neighbors are those who don't even like us because of who we're living for. Then, now that we've been re refreshed on, on that, right, we, we notice that Jesus also is teaching us here to, darn it, Acts comes back again, to go and do likewise. Go and show mercy. Go and show love, and care, and concern to all those people to the marginalized, to the, the forgotten, to the stranger, the alien, the neighbor, to those who believe in abortion, to those who have had an abortion. Go to them and show mercy. Go to the hater and show mercy. Go to the opponent. Go to the person on the other side of the aisle. And show mercy. It's really so simple. Yet we've made it so hard. Because, well, we're right. <laughs> That's our thought process, right? But guess what? Our thought process is clouded with selfishness. Our thought process is clouded with sin. That's why Jesus' way always works best. Show mercy, show love, show patience. And yes, we go and we go again and we do this and we try and we quickly realize we don't do it well at all times. Sometimes we're doing great, sometimes we're doing poor. We're reminded once again of how greatly far we are from loving and self-sacrificing the way that Christ does for us. And yet we go and we learn, right? We, we go and we grow and, and learn from this, even when we fail. But the great thing about this parable, friends, is that this parable is all about Jesus. Jesus. Yes, it's, it's showing us and telling us what to do, but this parable is about Jesus. Jesus became the good Samaritan for you and for me. The, the story of how Jesus entered into this world, right, this world of human suffering, pain, and sin, he entered into this world, into this stuff that left us for dead to carry us out 
He's the good Samaritan. He's the one who's caring for those who need mercy and love and grace. He picked up his cross. He picked up his cross and carried us to safety. See, he was lifted high up into that sky and nailed to that tree. And there he paid for our debts, our sins, and he healed our wounds. But not just ours. Whose? Everyone's. Even the priest and Levite that walked away. And because of this, friends, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. And because of that, we're to go and do Likewise, we love our neighbors. We love our neighbors, especially those who need help. We, we love our, our neighbors, any human being, even ones who so boldly disagree with you. We, we love our neighbors, even those who have done any sort of harm or injury to us or someone we love. These are people. These are children of God that he never stops loving, which means we never stop loving as well because these people never stop being our neighbors. And friends, here's the thing. Just by us, each of us who is here, leaning into the power of the Holy Spirit, knowing and showing God's love for us in Jesus Christ, and then going and doing likewise in our lives, we will make a world of difference. For God has put you in this spot. He's put you in this town or that town or this school or that school, in that workplace or this workplace, in that family, in that neighborhood for a reason right now. He's got you there for a purpose. His purpose. To go and do likewise, to love your neighbors. Do not try this alone. It won't work. Do not try this with man's advice. Do not try this with woman's advice. It won't work. Instead, remember what God has done for you through Jesus Christ. Friends, lean into the Lord. Refresh yourself in his word, in his grace, in his mercy. Pray, cry out to him, asking for help, asking for forgiveness. Open your heart, open your mind to the power of the Holy Spirit and let him work. You can and will make a difference in one person's life by loving them. By showing them mercy the way that Christ loves them the way that he shows them mercy, which, by the way, is the same way that he shows you and me love and mercy. When the Holy Spirit is at work in you, when you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and with all your mind, and you love your neighbor as yourself, truly, A little consideration, a little thought for others, does make all the difference. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And now may the peace that pass all understanding keep our hearts, our minds, focused on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand as we join with our praise team in our sending song, The Lion and the Lamb.
Amen. And that's why we are to simply go and share mercy, for every knee will bow before our Lord. Friends, go ahead and have a seat. Just a few quick announcements for you. Only a week and a half away, I think, from going to the National Youth Gathering. So uh, there's an opportunity, opportunity for continued prayer, right? That's a big emphasis for us this year here at Lutheran Memorial. Um, you have an opportunity to pray uh, as a prayer partner with uh, a youth. There's more information in the announcements, or you could talk to Sally about that, and she'll get you set up with praying for the youth as they head down. Also, Sally and Chad, because they have to go with the youth um, down to uh, Houston. Get, get to, get to, sorry, they get to go. Um, so if you want more information about that, please talk with Sally. Also, there's a volunteer opportunity for you all tomorrow, 22 Farms. For more information about that, you can talk to, to Monica. Um, she's upstairs right now. She'll be down. Um, if you do have snack donations for uh, the Women's Journey team's packing of snack bags, or those are due today, tomorrow? Are, today. But if there's something that you want to bring, uh, we'll still take donations. We'll be packing um, not this Tuesday, but the next one. Next Tuesday. The first Tuesday in July. Um, speaking of this coming week, uh, Lauren and I and the kids are going to be out of the office on vacation for a little bit this week. Um, other than the shepherds, if you're in need of spiritual contact, please reach out to Pastor Frank or Pastor Brody. Their number is here at the, in the main office with, with uh, uh, Sally and, and Monica. Uh, if, you're, if you're in need of any spiritual care, uh, they are, are blessing us um, in, that, in that way. Uh, just an update on Beth. Uh, she has come through her, her surgery successfully. She was in the hospital a little bit longer than anticipated because she, she lost too much blood. Um, but she was able to get home on Wednesday and is now um, slowly um, recovering. So just please continue to keep Beth in your prayers as she uh, rehabs. She said she is still two and a half inches taller. Um, once again, so the surgery was a success, so she got two and a half inches back. Um, that's it. Um, as always, thank you to our servants up top and down below. Thank you for being here. God's richest blessings as you continue to go out to go and do likewise, showing mercy and love to those people around you. God's love.